Hey, what's up? David Cohen here for Learn Now FX, and welcome back to another exciting Fusion tutorial. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to use occlusion and triggering with lens laser flares in DaVinci Resolve. So let's get started. What I have here is a video clip of Planet Earth, and I just resized it because the actual footage is different than my project size, so I'm just going to resize it. And to this, I'm going to add Lens Master Flare, so LM. And this is just what I'm going to show to demonstrate how to use layer occlusion. So I'm just going to bring the center here, and I'm going to choose a preset. Uh, let's see, I'm going to probably use one of the sci-fi presets for this one. Maybe this one. So I'm going to close this. And just so we don't get confused, I'm going to remove this from the flow. It's, you don't need it because you have a Lens Master Flares node inside of each preset. So I'm just going to move this here. And I'm going to create the occlusion layer. So I'm going to take a background. And I am going to add an ellipse mask. And I'm going to size the mask according to the size of the planet, like that. Even make it a little bit smaller. It doesn't have to be perfect. Make sure it's actually a circle, but I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller than the planet. So if I view, send this to the viewer, I'm going to see a white circle on the black background. And I just need to actually change the color of the background to white. And now I have a white circle on the black background. So I'm just going to pipe this into the occlusion input of, of the flare preset. And I'm going to go into the preset and use occlusion layer. So I can do it as a inverted alpha. So the way occlusion works is that areas that appear in white are going to be where the flare is visible and areas that appear in black are where it's invisible and we want it to be the other way around we want this part to be white and this part to be black so that's why i'm using inverted alpha so if i actually want to view the occlusion layer i'm going to see that this part is white and this part is black so when it gets behind the planet it just disappears and then when it comes in front of it, it reappears. But this is actually very sharp. It turns it off very abruptly. So what I want to do is I want to add a dilate node, which will grow the edges a little bit. So erode dilate. And I want to grow the edges just a little bit. So I'm going to set the filter to linear, because we want linear fall off. And I'm going to bring the amount to 0.01. Now, as we can see, we have this little linear ramp coming from the edge of the of the circle. This is going to make the fall off much smoother. So if you look at the preset now, if I try moving it, it will slowly get larger as it comes out from the planet. Let me just move it slowly. And there it is. It slowly appears and slowly disappears. And that's basically it. The only thing problem arises is when your media is when the layer that has the flare is a different size than the layer uh, than your occlusion layer so to demonstrate this i'm going to get rid of this resize node and now the flare is supposed to be drawn on a layer that is 2560 by 1440. so what you would do in this case is you would go in to the preset or the lens master flare node and i'm going to enable resize occlusion layer and this will automatically resize the occlusion layer to the layer of your input, to the layer of the actual media. And now it's the right size. So if I want to view it now, we'll see that it is the right size. So this is how to do a very simple layer occlusion. And we have some other options we can choose from. We have Luma, Alpha, Inverted Alpha, and Inverted Luma. And occlusion is actually pretty simple with Lens Master Flares. The occlusion controls are located in the Lens Master Flares node. And if you're building your own preset, that's where you would find it. So now I want to talk a little bit about triggering. So I'm just going to get rid of all of this. 
and I'm going to bring my Lens Master Flares node back and I'm going to build it on a black background. So triggering, basically what it is, is that it allows us to have the flare react in certain ways when it reaches certain parts of the screen. So if I were to open the preset builder and I would select like this glow element. So I can have it behave in different ways when it reaches different parts of the screen. So I'm just gonna hide these viewer controls. I can go to the triggering here and enable triggering. So I can have this appear only when it reaches the edge, which is actually what I did in a couple of presets to have certain elements appear only when they reach the edge. Or I can have it appear only when it reaches the center. So I can switch the triggering type from border to from center. Now if I want to preview the trigger, we can see that it's the smooth fall off. But I prefer to use exponential because it's more realistic. So I'm going to turn off preview trigger. And as you can see, this element will only appear when it gets close to the center and it will disappear when it is away from the center. But that's not all we can do with this. We can go back and we can turn off trigger brightness and we can enable color shift. So now, whenever it gets towards the center, it will change color. That's one cool thing to do, right? So that's one thing. What else we can do is what I prefer to do when we work with multi irises is I like to have it fade out once the light leaves the screen. So what I do, I go to the triggering, I set the type from center and the fall off exponential. I think a good number for the exponent would be two. And I want to change the brightness mode from add to to multiply by. All right. And I actually forgot to click this enable triggering button. So what this will do is when I move the flare out of the frame, this will actually slowly fade, but not fast enough as we can see. And there's one more thing that I already mentioned is I purposely made the opacity and brightness sliders too high. So you can see what the shape looks like before you bring down the opacity and the brightness. So when it leaves the frame, this multi iris fades out and when it gets to the center, it's at full brightness. That's another thing we can do with this. And there are a few other things we can do. We can actually have it um, change the size, let's say. So if we had like a ring element like that, and I'm just going to maybe add some rays to it, bring down the gain. Now I can have a trigger with the size. So I can enable the triggering and have a trigger from the center, bring the type to exponential and bring down the exponent. It doesn't have to be like a round number. And I'm going to turn off trigger brightness and enable trigger size. So what happens now is that when I move the flare around, the size of the ring changes. So when it's far away, the ring doesn't exist. And when it's close to the center, the ring gets larger and larger and larger. And away it gets smaller. So these are some really cool things that you can do with the triggering. And of course, you can always preview the trigger in to see if you're happy with where it starts and where it ends. This is our trigger. You can have it do it the same thing from the, from the border instead. Just turn off the preview. We can have that ring appear when it gets to the border. And one thing I like to do with presets is I would add a shine. What I like to do, I add a shine. And I want to make it like a spotlight sort of thing. So I bring the length down like that, make it like a beam. Turn on auto rotation so it's always facing the center like that, it's always gonna face the center and have the brightness be multiplied by the edge. So I'm just going to leave it type from border, bring the exponent, leave it at nine, probably maybe make it a little bit smaller. So 
I'm going to change the brightness mode from add to to multiply by. And I want to bring the offset probably up a little bit. So what happens? This element is virtually invisible when you're in the middle of the screen. But when you get anywhere towards the edge, you get this sort of rays coming out when you get towards the edge. So that these are the cool things that you can do with edge triggering and occlusion. I hope you guys like this video. Until next time, I'm David Cohen, and this is Learn Now Effects.